If you give a hungry man a fish, he'll eat for the day. If you give a hungry man a fishing rod, he'll probably hit you over the head with it. But if you teach a man how to use that fishing rod, the sky's the limit. I'm sure we've all heard that saying in one version or another, and it means everything to every one of us sitting here today. So yeah, now I'm a bit nervous after this last little uh, debate that went on, but it's healthy, it's good. It's need, it needs to happen. So let me start by saying good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My insights today are on the development and need of production skills globally to any event. Wow. I'm sure we've heard that statement said in many different ways in the last 24 hours. Anyhow, my topic is to highlight the warrants, roles, and reasons of the production team and that the upliftment or education of the sector, parallel to technical, is just as pertinent. And thus, on invitation to this conference, and after reading about the purpose and direction, I find myself hopeful of a new dawning for our industry that is certainly needed, as I am definitely one of the roadies. Oh, sorry, uh, Andy live event technicians and therefore am here today to represent and speak as one of the workforce that is on the ground that has still and that has and still does many major events in South Africa. So by virtue of the title of this conference I would like to speak specifically about production and not technical for a change as it is this aspect that lends to the building of partnerships or for me, the bridge between promoter or event organizer or supplier and event technical. As you know, there are various roles that are needed and there has to be a system where we have the right skilled person for the specific task to the success of an event. And again, there are many roles, but for now I wish to use as example or even elaborate on a specific role and that is production manager. And just to be clear, not a previously advantaged technical project manager, as this person is completely different. In fact, let's define these roles briefly. As many promoters, and I suppose justifiably so, do not understand the difference and or why it is needed, especially as it impacts on budget. At a summit held in Cape Town on Tuesday, regarding the city and event organizers, a similar topic was touched on and discussed around the need for dedicated safety officer. And the long and short of it all was <coughs> accountability, responsibility. And let's face it, every promoter needs to blame someone else and not himself for all problems that they may incur on an event. And on this point, I need to say that I find it actually very disappointing that there are not many event companies or event promoters here today for this conference, because let's face it, we cannot further our efforts collectively without firstly their buy-in, but more importantly, with their understanding that we intend to regulate our industry through this process. Anyway, so putting it simply, this person, technical project manager, this person is responsible for the technical setup and efficient technical operation of the event. This person, by virtue of who pays his salary, has one mandate, technical service delivery. So outside the borders of technical land, nothing else exists. They are aware of it, but it's not their problem. This is a problem. The production manager. The production manager's responsibility is exactly what it says. The person, as of their education or experience, will be the ears and eyes of the promoter, fundamentally looking after the promoter's interest in every aspect of the production and not just the technical. So if not the technical, then what? First and foremost, responsibility of the event. Making sure that the team underneath that person looks after their jobs, site layout, security, safety aspects, overall hospitality, synergy of creative and technical. To sum it up, the production manager and the team are the promoters. Well, indirectly, because they have a more detailed understanding of the industry. This is why they are capable of doing this. This then gives the promoter the opportunity to have reports and access to constant checks and balances to their event, leaving the promoter to do just that, promote, whether it be guests, VIPs, or sponsors. So 
Production managers' greatest assets. We've been speaking about it the whole morning. What is the greatest asset? What is their greatest asset? A great team. A great team is just that. These are people that have the expertise, experience, and understanding of how an event works, and it needs to be enforced. As too often have promoters or event companies said, now wait a minute, I've got a cousin that needs work. Or oh, wait, I have a friend that can do that. And on every occasion, this philosophy has backfired with the end result of a poorly delivered event. event. This then makes it so prevalent that the right human resources protocol is followed and that we guide our promoters, which is ultimately indicative of the need of these talented personnel. So who makes up a production team? Various. Site, venue manager, ushers, hospitality, technical, yes, the box pusher, security, stage, janitor, these are just to touch the service of event staff complement, but they all play a pivotal role to anybody's event. So now that we have a team together and a brief understanding and importance of the roles and reasons of a team, or in this case study, of a production manager, I suppose the next question is why? Why do we need such a great team? Why do we need all of these people? So let's leave the business, promoter, or events company aside. The position of a production manager is, is not just there to ensure the promoter's dream is realized. He or she is ultimately the link between all departments and the glue that keeps it all together. He or she is the person that gives the security team their direction and mandate, the creative their boundaries, the technical their creative layout, the site manager the plan on where to put the stage, or the stage manager the show order to execute to time, and ever so now and then the shoulder to cry on when a techie complains that his wife is leaving him. Is the promoter going to do this? I think not. And again, it shows the reason why everybody is a pivotal part of any event. All of these aspects and attributes executed by knowledgeable artisans are the fundamentals that make up our industry, who have all had to start somewhere, yes, including having to push a box. Now, I choose the word artisan as it has been repeatedly stated since yesterday that we do not currently have a tertiary system that offers these various departments in our industry as a course and therefore the accomplishment of a certificate or diploma. And so most of us learned from watching tipping trucks, carrying a flight case, and occasionally being around a white man that was willing to spend time with you and teach and guide you. As a result, for many years, the industry was almost a members-only club. Yesterday, we heard stats of people that have been trained. Great. So where are they? Because talk is cheap. OK, so the response was there was no tracking system in place. Well, I can tell you that those of us that are on the ground just don't see them. So yes, we do need a better tracking system. Also, let's talk transformation for a moment. We were given a detailed presentation on triple BEE and how your business should comply and the point scoring thereof. That's all good and well. But when are we going to address the fact that the company representative or master technician staff complement is not reflective of a black South Africa? Should not our companies practice what they preach and not chase a bottom line because of the BB, triple BEE process? Which leads me to acknowledge a statement made yesterday about walking into a convention center and finding the technical team being run by a minority. So obviously the question will be asked, where is the fair play or fair competition? So what is the next step? How do we fix this? Now, I'm glad that we are talking change, but after 21 years, there is still flagrant inequality, not just from a black or white perspective, but also from a gender stance. How do we ensure that it is no longer a members-only club? How do we ensure that the sound engineer or the public relations officer or the marketing manager shares their knowledge so that it uplifts the, the roadie to the next level. We speak that we wish to attain European or international standards, or in simpler terms, how do we make a smart black person and not just a, played, a paid black box pusher? For me, the bigger picture to ask is how do we create a South African event and technical production system to correlate with, with international standards? It is not impossible. In fact, we have already done this. 
As we saw yesterday, we hosted the best World Cup ever. So much so, we are FIFA's Plan B. And do you know why? Not, be, not just because of the technical and the event management, because that was done in Berlin, but by Ubuntu, by the African passion that was the life-giving blood through our working ethics. It was our black culture that won hearts internationally. So I say again, how do we create a South African system that can be aligned to the international standards? How do we do this? By moving forward. Like Janet said, let's move past all the yabba yabba. As we all know sitting here what needs to be done. Let's move past all the egos and arrogance and realize we have a future to think of. It cannot be just us here in this room that have started a change and want to continue to do more. Let's take it to the next level with information, communication, and unity as key. In fact, the simple answer to this path is education. As has been mentioned here in South Africa, the closest you can get to an accredited document of accomplishment is for you to do a course at TUT or Damlin, perhaps as a studio engineer, which many of you will know does not even compare to live application. Currently, there are also various courses that offer event management or logistics, PR, hospitality, marketing, etc. But none that speaks or offers with definitive insight or understanding to our industry. And as you heard yesterday, probably taught by an event illiterate. So for now, we hail the efforts of SARA, as well as the few technical companies that have intern possibilities specifically for technical. And make no mistake, I applaud them for this initiative. However, it is not just technical that makes an event. And thus it is incumbent on us now, here, today, to take the initiative, to stand together and make the difference with one voice. Education is the key. Now yesterday I heard a lot about European rules and regulations and from our own colleagues the use of fancy acronyms and being members of various associations that do what? What do they do? And a lot of it went over our heads, which clearly means we have a lot of work to do. And I speak again as one of the team members on the ground, and I have not heard of half of these associations fighting for my future. Yes. Please, please can we share this information? Can we have unity and get rid of the members only syndrome? Especially once we have the backstage acad academy or center here in South Africa. Perhaps then too, we can show off pictures with color in it. In conclusion, I'm truly hopeful that this conference will be the inaugural platform that will encourage us all to think of tomorrow and ensure our government departments of trade and industry and arts and culture to realize that we too are a cog in the mechanism of enhancing our national GDP, which the minister pointed out yesterday was a whopping 2.9%. And thus that we too can share legacy for tomorrow and educate those that will lead in enterprise as enterprise will lead to alleviate poverty and the success of a nation. And to end, this is why every event needs a production team, as the final goal is the bigger picture and not just a DB setting. My name is Sharif Baker, and I am one of the crazy ones. Thank you.